We are your home theater and AV questions answered. This is AV Rant. Want your home theater or AV question answered by Tom and Rob? Send it to question at avrant.com. Welcome to AV Rant. I'm Tom Antry and I'm here with Rob H. Justin. What is the best? This is not Bieber. This is our not Bieber, Justin. We've got a couple of jokes and not Beavers. Uh, what is the best wireless subwoofer connection kit, regardless of cost? And what is the best under 250 if there's a difference? Is there stuff over 250? I, I don't guess know. For a subwoofer connection, I'm, I'm sure somebody makes something. That, uh, somebody be, will be happy to, to charge you more than $250, but I don't think I've sure. ever seen one. So <laughs> go. What is it? I'm going to point you to the outlaw. Uh, yep. The Outlaw is $119, so it's not the cheapest one that's out there, but it's very reliable. It uses the uh, frequency hopping technology so that if they get some interference on one frequency, it auto switches to another, much like your cordless phone does. Uh, so yeah, okay. nice units, 120 bucks, should do the job very nicely. So what about the best wireless surround speaker kit? Again, cost no object and under 250 if there's a difference. Again... Well, this, I don't know what this two fifty price point is, but I don't know I've ever heard of one that's about two fifty. I think that's what he has to spend. So, <laughs> ah, there you go. Okay, yeah. well, you're going to be able to spend this. The one that we have uh, talked about a number of times in this podcast is the Anthony. 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 Yeah. Anthony. Anthony. It's hard to say Pro on the podcast product. with like if you don't see the words, but A M P H O N Y. P H O N Y. Yes, and that's a the wireless speaker kit that they make. It's the model is eighteen hundred. Model eighteen hundred is the really nice one because what that gives you is one transmitter unit, so that sits up near the pre outs for your AV receiver. Because if you're doing wireless surrounds, you have the pre outs for your surrounds uh, feeding this, or it can actually take a speaker wire connection. So if your AV receiver does not have pre outs for the surrounds, you can just send it the speaker wire connection for the surrounds, which is very important because a lot of wireless things don't have speaker wire connections so if you don't have a That's full right. set of pre-outs you wouldn't be able to use it for surrounds this can take the speaker wire right from your uh, surround binding posts and then it gives you two class d 50 watts per channel but two 50 watt class d amplifiers uh that of course connect wirelessly to that transmitter but then power any set of regular speakers uh you do yeah, have yeah. to plug them into power you have to plug them into a wall outlet of course to power them but it's a really nice way to set things up and uh, works pretty darn well i will say take the time to adjust the gain levels on everything because right. you have the gain you have the gain level that's coming out of your AV receiver, you have the gain level on the transmitter and the gain level on the receivers. So you have three places to adjust gain. And uh, that and, was and, what's her name's problem, yeah, right? Um, yeah, that was that Abby's was issue and Abby's she, problem. She did manage to solve that with some yeah. uh, it took some trial and error, but you know, that's that's what you do. Cuz if you don't have the gain set right, then sometimes they'll cut in and out or or get some clicking sort of, popping get some clicking yeah. weird sounds, so. Anyways, his previous setup was a Marantz SR6010 with EMP Tech Towers, EMP R56CI Center. That was the big boy. Setup. In this new setup, everything needs to be much smaller, and the speakers need to be wall-mounted, so he's opted for a Marantz slimline receiver. Mm -hmm. He decided to give the Martin Logan Motion Series a try. That's a good one. Yeah. He's sitting 10 feet from uh, the, lar the front wall. Uh, with the fireplace, cabinet, and built-in shelving. The TV is 55 inches, which is as large as the uh, built-in space will hold. And he's still a bit unsure of the best heights for placing his front left and right speakers. For reference, he's included a picture with the 27-inch tall stands. And a cute I doggy. And a doggy, which is also 27 inches, it looks like. Pretty darn close, <laughs> Maybe. yeah. It only might be 28. <laughs> so I thought that was some sort of uh, air filter purifier space heater thing oh. until he told me what that was so that's a 27 yeah. inch tall speaker stand yeah so that's yeah your stuff's gonna be awfully high and this is uh actually not so bad for me uh yeah. i would i would flank them on either side of the tv just like you normally would your center channel is going to be underneath the tv right yeah in the, in the one obvious obvious space there's a there's a uh, cabinet a, below a space on the wall and then the uh the cabinet portion for the built-in where his tv is that space on the wall is obviously yeah. where the center speaker will go and he even and that's, says that's just slightly below ear level so that's like perfect that's so that the that's center gonna be is fine easy. yeah yeah the center is going to be easy the other ones are going to be a little bit higher i'm okay with that i think it will sound fine uh uh He's he he's he is. I'm gonna start reading again. He's just concerned that if he puts the left front left and right speakers at the same height, they'll be quite far below the TV. So he he's talking about if he puts them in line right. with the center channel. In line with the center, uh, yeah. Well, I would not. I would not do that. I wouldn't do that. 
So I put no, I put them a little above. I don't know if I'd. I mean, why why couldn't the front left and right be basically at the same height as that wooden portion of the built-in, right? That puts them a little bit below the TV, up. a little bit above the center, but like just above the fireplace, right? So yeah. they'd be a little bit above your, but barely above. I mean, they'd be about as much above your level as his center will be below your level, which is totally fine. Now, and that they're not so far below the TV that it will seem disjointed. Is this the one where he's thinking about? Uh, he's worried about painted grills and stuff like that, right? He he's going to paint the grills. Is that the same guy? Uh, I, am I getting no, confused? No, not for these because these were. He was thinking on walls all the time. On walls, on yeah. walls, on walls. Okay, uh, yeah. Now, okay, you can basically put these speakers wherever you want. Now, what you're Kinda, thinking? Because I mean, these are is, aimable is, too. Once they're on the mounts, once they're on the wall mount, it, you can aim them. In line with your center channel is fine. I mean, think of surround bars. People use those all right. the time. This is that would be basically what you are creating a better sound bar. But that's basically what you're creating, and that's fine. You can put them up next to your TV. It'll be too high. They will be too high. But you can yeah. aim them, and it, it will look more normal. I think to 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 do that. I mean, on, I'm looking at this. Want. I'm like, there's the there's the fairly chunky wood section below his TV. Yeah. I would put the front left and right speakers right beside that wood section. That's that's where they to me it would look right. It would get you approximately the correct height, and it'd be yeah. yes, it would be below the TV, but not that much, so it won't be disjointed. You don't have to really worry about that. Uh, yeah. Your brain will anchor that sound yeah. oh, in yeah. that TV without you having to do anything about placing yeah. these speakers. That's why I'm saying that you really have flexible options here. First of all, your center channel is basically where it needs to be anyways. Uh -huh. And the other two speakers, it really doesn't matter. That other guy that we were just talking about, he I don't think he knew he had a blown tweeter until he turned off his center channel because, you know, you know what I'm saying? I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm not, that's not an insult against him. I it's mean, hard to tell. I, it's hard to tell. <laughs> Because your right. brain is putting everything where it's supposed to be, and it's used to kicking out all the stuff that doesn't make sense. So it kicks it out, and it's going to be fun. Anyways, hey, man, I couldn't uh, pick out lossless audio, so none of us are above this. The, the built-in is 58 inches high, so if he puts the front, left, right speakers beside the TV, the tweeters will be about 72 inches high, so that's way too high. That's high. He wants it to look good and sound good, and the Motion 4... Uh, and the motion for front left right speakers could be turned upside down to get the tweeters lower. So where should they go? No, I do. I do that, them. I would do them right side up, right beside yeah, that chunky yeah. wood part that's below your TV. That's where I put. That's it. fine. I think but it'll really, look right too. Yeah. With this ten foot distance, with the Marantz uh, slimline fifty, oh, I'm sorry, fifteen oh four slimline, be enough to power the Martin Logan speakers. Yep, they will never be super loud, and uh, yeah, you're not sitting that far away. No, ten so feet is good. close. Uh, we know for a fact he's got two subwoofers, so he's setting them to small, crossing them yeah. over, no problem. All right. Since he lost a dedicated theater, did I skip a question? No, I didn't. Nope. Since he lost the dedicated theater in his new house, his wife agreed uh, to setting up a small, separate li music listing station. He's using some Golden Ear uh, Aeon, 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 Aeon three speakers, and he has one of uh, the Mono Price tube amps. He loves how the tube amp looks, and it's decent, but he isn't happy with the noise floor. He's got <laughs> seven fifty. $750 to potentially spend, but with the new baby on the way, he'd be just as happy to save that money. He'd really love a tube amp for the looks, but it's always it's always going to be the higher noise floor. A uh, really cool-looking solid-state amp would be just fine. Apparently, aesthetics are important. Apparently, yeah. Okay. So, cool-looking tubes preferred, but not the expensive sound quality. Under 750 and there's no subwoofer in the setup and no AV receiver desired. Any ideas? Uh, I'm so yeah, out of my element on this one. <laughs> Yeah, okay. So to, you're looking for an integrated amp. Is what you're really looking for. You're maybe looking for maybe we just read the next question because that all feeds into this. That, uh, all right, I'll go to the next question. The, together, I, yeah. the idea of his music uh, setup is small and simple. He has a Chromecast and uh, Echo Dot and HTPC with Kodi and Plex. He's thinking of using one source that can control its own volume connected to the tube amp, and that would be it. So what would we use as a source? And if you did end up wanting to use multiple sources, is there a small, cool-looking amp that could connect and switch between more than one source? So that's, yes. the, that's the integrated yeah. amp part of it right there. You need an integrated amp. That's what you want is an integrated amp. And there's that, uh, First of all, go searching for integrated amps and then get back to us <laughs> oh, about Lord. what you find. Because oh. that's a rabbit hole, and we will see you in three months. No but there's lots of them out there. Um, 
the, I mean, t- and you can spend a lot more than seven hundred fifty dollars on these things. So oh, yes. the e- the easiest place to go is uh, Emotiva is going to have something. I yeah, don't know they if it's do. I mean, my but it should be. My first thought was Emotiva. Their TA one hundred. It's four hundred dollars. It does exactly what you need it to do, and will sound great doing it. I don't know if you'll think it's cool looking enough because it's just. I mean, it looks actually a it's lot a like your Morant Slimline. Yeah, it looks a lot yeah. like your Morant Slimline. It's it's a regular width piece of equipment, seventeen inches wide, black, not very tall because it doesn't have to be. I don't know if that's cool enough looking, but it does what you want to do and will sound great this doing it. This is what you do: that's, you put the tube amp on the uh, on display and you leave it on ah, at all right. times. Yeah, and then you put this someplace else yeah. nearby, and people and go, then, "Holy cow, that amp sounds great!" Yeah, Only you will know. <laughs> Only you will know. That's what you do. Now, Four I will months. say, um, you know, for something like this, as much as I sometimes make fun of Steve Guttenberg over at uh, CNET because I don't totally agree with the way that he recommends and evaluates things, but he had a pretty darn good article talking about, uh, you know, interesting looking, fun sounding amps. There is a company called Yolita, that's Yolita spelled with a J, uh, but they make some very interesting looking tube amps, including one called the FX10, which is, if you want interesting looking, this. This is interesting looking. It is an integrated amp, so it has multiple source inputs. Uh, all it looks like an aquarium. An aquarium for tubes. Yeah, <laughs> all, st- all like. stereo analog, but I mean, it is certainly tube and interesting looking. I have no idea how it sounds. I mean, Steve Guttenberg says it sounds very nice for the price. It's $500, but that's under $750. You could check it out. Uh, I have no experience with it, but that's that's a fun looking tube integrated amp. Um, yeah, there. that's that's one option. There's uh, been a couple of... I use it tubes. As a source. Oh yeah. Well, if you use the Emotiva, you should have more than one input, right? So you yeah, can, you'd be able use to whatever easily. sources you want with that one. But uh, right. I would probably use your Echo Dot because that can connect to whatever else you want to do. Yeah, yeah. If you're only going to use one source, I, I would probably use the Echo Dot. Yeah, I agree. That's the way to go. Once your question answered, send it to question at avrant.com. Is A.V. Rant. Now go out and listen to something.